In the NHL, greatness is defined in many ways. Some say it's about scoring ability, others say it's about the ability to shut down the top players on a night-to-night -night basis. Some say it's all about team success or perhaps even career accolades. All right guys, so Rob from the future here. So where I live, it has been hot as balls. I knew I was sweating during this clip, but I didn't realize it was I was just downpouring. It's honestly just comical editing this right now. Um, so please ignore the sweat. Just, uh, I'm just a, a sweaty boy. And I mean, they're not wrong. But one of the surefire ways one can gauge greatness is the ability to elevate the players around you. As we've seen star players single-handedly elevate a player to an all new level, far beyond anything they could ever achieve without that player, or AKA they're getting hard carried. And no, Leon Drysaddle is not getting carried by McDavid. If you still have that opinion in 2021, I hate, I hate your guts. As we have even seen star players literally earn their line mates millions of extra dollars on their contracts. So in today's video, we're gonna go over players who were hard carried by a star. Also, this is part two. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it down below. Go watch it. And if you enjoyed the videos, make sure to press subscribe for your weekly dose of hockey content. We are on the final push to 60K. So any support would really make my day. Didn't mean to rhyme that. Pavel Datsuk, the magician, one of the greatest two-way players to ever grace the game of hockey. Not only does he arguably have the best hands in NHL history, with hands down the best shootout mixtape, routinely absolutely embarrassing the competition every single night, pulling moves like this, yes! disgusting, but he was also a phenomenal shutdown center who battled extremely hard on pucks and played with grit. Which is why he'd also take home three Selkie trophies in his career. However, aside from his Hall of Fame career, the Selkies, his four Lady Bings, his two Stanley Cups, gold medals, KHL Championship, what is easily the most impressive thing Datsuk has ever done in the game of hockey is single-handedly make a bottom six grinder $30 million. Justin Abdelkader. Drafted in the second round in 2005, the Michigan native would join the Spartans and have a great NCAA career. 40 points in 42 games in his sophomore season, and Abno Cater was proving to be that sandpaper grit player with some good offensive upside. He would play well in the minors, slowly prove himself with some call-ups, where he'd start in the bottom six and he would put up six points in his first 50 games. But remember, he was a grinder. And slowly over the years, Detroit had a lot of success and moving pieces. And Justin would somehow end up in the top six. Blessed by the hockey gods. Because, you know, do you know who else was there? Pavel friggin Datsuk. And within his first season of increased minutes and having a god on his line, Abdel Kader would go from averaging, you know, 8-9 goals in his previous four seasons to playing with the Magic Man and racking up 23 goals in 71 games. Also meeting in an 82-game season, he was on pace for 27 goals from an inconsistent grinder to a 30-goal scorer. What? And even though at this point Datsuk was now 36, and was at the end of his NHL tenure, he would carry Justin to back-to-back 20-goal -back seasons. And as a direct result of this spike in production, not only was he now putting up points for the first time in his career, but my man would get the bank. As he would sign a 7-year, $29.75 million contract. Not bad, but it's okay. He still has Datsuk. In the 2017 NHL offseason, Pavel Datsuk would make the heartbreaking decision to retire from the NHL and head to Russia. And as a result, Justin Abdelkader would be completely and utterly exposed. As he would go from a 30 goal scorer to 7 goals. He would kind of bounce back the next season with 13, but he would see Master decline the next season with 6 goals. And finally, 3 years after playing with Datsuk and looking like a stud, Justin would put up 0 goals, 3 assists, and 49 games. The offensive capability was literally sucked out of his soul once Pavel left. On top of seeing huge defensive regression, as he would go from playing with Datsuk nearly 19 minutes per night, to being a 4th line grinder with no offense. And as a result, he would leave the NHL altogether to go play in Europe. Pat Maroon, the big rig. After developing well in the North American Hockey League, Maroon would light it up with the London Knights and then transition into his professional hockey career. And considering that Pat was a physical specimen, his transition was seamless. 
great production off the bat in the minors and a good rookie season putting up 29 points in 62 games as he was physical not the best skater but he was also a great net front presence in his final season he would put up four goals 13 points in 56 games as maroon is proving to be a great bottom six option except that is until my man would be saved by the breath of god Connor McJesus, the hockey savior, as he would be acquired by the Oilers for Martin Grenat in a fourth round pick. And within his first season, now playing with Connor McDavid himself, my dude would go from putting up four goals, four, to a 27 goal season. That does not just happen. The next season, Maroon is on pace for another 20 goal, 45 point season, and he'd be traded to the Devils. And since the 2016 season playing with McDavid, Maroon has not even put up half the amount of goals, having 10 with the Blues and 4 goals this season with Tampa. McDavid is such a god, I swear he would even make Paul Bizanet a 30 goal all-star, I swear. And you know what's hilarious? Every team knew it. I mean, even Patrick Maroon knew it. Because right after coming off a near 30 goal season and then another 20 plus goal season, Maroon would sign a contract worth 1.75 million and then a 900k deal with Tampa. Zach Heinemann, who has never put up more than 25 goals and plays a reminiscent game, just signed a $38.5 million contract. There has not been a single 30 goal scorer who has signed for anything less than like four to five million. One of the best examples I could find was Victor Arvidsson signing at 4.25 million. But that's no disrespect for the big rig, because even though he signed for a lot less at 1.75 million, he won the Stanley Cup that year playing a pivotal role. And you know, just had back to back Stanley Cups with Tampa, meaning my man won three straight Stanley Cups in a row. Impressive. During the 1999 NHL draft, Brian Burke would shockingly pull some crazy strings and end up with pick number two and number three, which he'd use to draft Daniel and Henrik Sedin. The Sedins would go on to having a fascinating career, as they would develop the reputation of having otherworldly chemistry, constantly finding each other with impossible passes, passes nobody else in the NHL could even think of, and with that, the Sedins throughout their entire career would adopt different players on their line and in some cases seemingly make them stars overnight. And after the 2005 lockout, the Sedins would elevate to a new level and demonstrate their immense carrying ability. Now, before we get into that, before the lockout, the Sedins were actually considered to be very disappointing. They showed these crazy flashes, but they were not physical, they weren't reliable, and they seemed to be more so good middle six players. And so after the lockout ended, the Sedins would get a new line mate, Anton Carter and they would form a line coined the Brothers. A previous 25-30 goal scorer who had been experiencing massive decline in the seasons prior. And because of that, the Canucks would throw a flyer sending Carter to a one-year, $1 million deal. And well, with the Sedins, Carter would have his breakout season, scoring a career-high 33 goals, 22 assists, and 55 points. Also, there's been a lot of weird coincidences with the Sedins throughout their career. And you're telling me Anton Carter would score 33 goals and 22 assists? And this year just so happened to be the same year that Henrik and Daniel would explode in their development as they would put up 71 and 75 points, respectfully. And around this time, this was a who is doing what situation. Was Anton Carter the missing piece that finally got the Sedins to break out? Or did the Sedins experience their first hard carry season? And well, this narrative, you know, who made who, proved to be instrumental in Carter's contract negotiations. As Carter felt like he was back to form, where the Canucks felt like, ah, eh, that was mostly the Sedins. And so they would have a lot of back and forth talk, you know, who made who, who is worth what, as Anson Carter reportedly wanted a three year, $3 million AAV contract. And keep in mind, the best players in the world during this time were only making around, you know, five, six million. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, of course, but this would be like Carter asking for like five to six million today. However, the Canucks were offering 1.8 million. So for the sake of simplicity, they'd say that's about 3.5 to $4 million in today's money. Thus, they could not agree on a price and Anson Carter would walk and sign a one-year deal worth 2.5 million with Columbus. However, Carter would go from a 33 goal scorer to putting up 11 goals and then just straight up retiring, where he would then go play in Switzerland. 
Now, I do want to make one thing clear. This is no disrespect to Anson Carter, but this is more so about the Sedin's godly ability to elevate line mates. Carter was a great player in his time and is a large contributor to the black history within our game, but goddamn was he hard carried. Because this whole who made who situation is very obvious in hindsight, as Anson Carter would retire and the Sedins would become a face of the league. Or I guess, faces. Both winning major hardware, some of the most entertaining highlight packs in NHL history, on top of the fact that right after he retired, Alex Burroughs would replace him on that line, where Burroughs himself would go from a fourth line grinder to putting up, or at least close to it, 30 goals four years in a row. The Sedins got a lot of hate, but man, they were unique specimens. Can you name someone else who was carried by a star? Comment down below, I would love to hear. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content. We are so close to 60k. Crazy. And as always, thanks for watching.